Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about mineral nutrition. Most of the minerals present in the soil enter the plant through roots. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about the role of the essential elements, nature deficiency and symptoms. So, let's enter into the section. What is the criteria for essentiality? There are three criteria for essentiality. Let's look one by one. The element should be supporting for the normal growth and reproduction. The second criteria is the element should be specific and not replaceable by another element. And the third criteria is the element should be directly involved in the metabolism of the plant. So based on this criteria, few elements have been absolutely essential for the plant growth and metabolism. So elements are divided into two broad categories such as macronutrients and micronutrients. So let's look out each one. First one is macronutrients. From the word it is clear that macro means it should be present in large amounts. So let's look what all are the elements. It include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium and magnesium. So here carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are called non-mineral elements because they are obtained from carbon dioxide and water while nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium and magnesium are directly obtained from soil as mineral nutrition. Next one is micronutrients. From the word itself, it is clear that it should be present in a very small amount. So let's look the elements. It includes iron, manganese, copper, molybdenum, zinc, boron, chlorine and nickel. It is very difficult to remember all the names of 17 essential elements. So don't worry about this. I have created a video on easy and simplified mnemonic tricks to learn micro and macro nutrients. It will be really helpful for you. Please do watch it. So coming back to the section role of macronutrients and micronutrients. This is a very important section in mineral nutrition and this portion is asked in every competitive exam such as in which form does the plant uptake the minerals and the role of minerals such as so let's look one by one to unless nitrogen the nitrogen is required by the plant in a greatest amount and the plant uptake nitrogen mainly in the form of nitrate ions and there are also plants which uptake nitrogen in the form of nitrite or ammonium ions and this nitrogen is present in every part of the plant such as the metastomatic tissues and metabolically active cells and these nitrogen is a major constituent of proteins, nucleic acid, vitamins and hormones. The second one is phosphorus. This phosphorus is absorbed by the plant in the form of phosphate ions. This phosphorus forms a major constituent of the cell membranes and it contains in certain proteins, nucleic acid and nucleotides. This phosphorus is required for all phosphorylation reactions. Next one is potassium. The plants absorb potassium in the form of potassium ions. And this forms in certain mesthematic tissues, buds, leaves and root tips. Let's look the role of potassium. Potassium helps to maintain the anion cation balance in the cell. The protein synthesis, opening and closing of stomata, activation of enzymes and maintenance of turgidity of the cells. So the next one is calcium. The calcium is absorbed in the form of calcium ions. And this calcium is present in all the metastomatic and differentiating tissue. The role of calcium is it takes place in during cell division such as in the synthesis of cell wall and formation of mitotic spindle. And it accumulates in all the leaves and it involved in normal functioning of cell membrane and it activates certain 
enzyme and plays an important role in regulating metabolic activities. Next one is magnesium. The magnesium is absorbed by the plants in the form of magnesium ions and the role of magnesium is it activates the enzyme of respiration and photosynthesis. It helps in the synthesis of DNA and RNA and the magnesium it is a constraint of ring structure of chlorophyll and it helps to maintain the ribosome structure. The next one is Sulfur. The sulfur is absorbed in the form of sulfate ions and the sulfur is present in two amino acids such as cysteine and methionine and it also forms a major constant of several coenzymes, vitamins and ferrodoxin. The next one is iron. The iron is absorbed by the plants in the form of ferric ions and this iron is required in plant in a larger amount in comparison with other micronutrients and the role of iron is it involved in the transfer of electrons and during the transfer of electron it is reversibly oxidized and it also activates several enzymes and it is essential in the formation of chlorophyll. The next one is manganese. The manganese is absorbed in the form of manganese ion and this manganese activates many enzymes involved in photosynthesis, respiration and nitrogen metabolism and the function of manganese is the splitting of water to liberate oxygen during photosynthesis. Next one is zinc. Zinc is absorbed by the plant in the form of zinc ions and it activates various enzymes and zinc is also help in the synthesis of auxin. Next one is copper. The copper is absorbed by the plant in the form of cupric ions and it is very essential for overall metabolism of the plants and it is associated with certain enzyme which is involved in redox reaction. Next one is boron. Boron is absorbed by plants in the form of borate ions. Let's look the role of borons. It involved in the uptake and utilization of calcium ions. It involves in membrane function, pollen germination, cell elongation, cell differentiation and carbohydrate translocation. Next one is molybdenum. The plants absorb molybdenum in the form of molybdate ions and this molybdenum is an essential compound of several enzymes including nitrogenase, nitrate reductase both of which participate in nitrogen metabolism. So the last one is chlorine. The chlorine is absorbed by the plant in the form of chloride anion and it helps in determining the solute concentration anion cation balance in the cell. And it is also having a role in water splitting reaction in photosynthesis which led to the oxygen evolution. The next topic is about deficiency symptoms of essential elements. So each element is having a particular role in plants. So absence of that element shows a morphological changes and these morphological changes are called deficiency symptoms and however if the deficiency or deprivation continues it eventually lead to the death of the plant. Elements are actively mobilized within the plants and it is exported to the young developing tissues because the deficiency symptoms tend to appear first in all the tissues so that the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen, potassium, magnesium are first visible in senescent leaves. Deficiency symptoms shown by plants such as it include chlorosis, necrosis, standard plant growth, premature fall of leaves and buds and inhibition of cell divisions. So what is chlorosis? The chlorosis is due to the loss of chlorophyll leading to the alloying of leaf. It is because of the deficiency of nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, ferrous, manganese, zinc and molybdenum. The next one is necrosis. Necrosis is due to the dead tissue in leaves and it is due to the deficiency of calcium, magnesium, copper and potassium. 
The next one is inhibition of cell division. It is due to the lack or the low level of nitrogen, potassium, sulfur and molybdenum. Delay in flowering. It is due to the low concentration of nitrogen, sulfur and molybdenum. So these all are the brief notes on micro and macronutrients. Hope you guys all understand the concept and the role of essential elements and the function. In a nutshell concept, my next video is about the easy and simplified mnemonic tricks to learn macro and micronutrients. Please do watch. If you like this class on mineral nutrition, please like and subscribe my channel and share this video to your friends. Stay tuned and stay subscribed for upcoming uploads.